Mr. Ashwat Ramaya has also conducted several training programs and lectures in management associations and industrial bodies. And he is also a coach in many of the organizations, Pan India, as well as internationally, he has conducted many of the sessions. He is also a practitioner of yoga and meditation for the past 50 years and has taught yoga to many of the students, more than thousands of students. Uh, in overseas programs, he has conducted training programs in Dubai, Malaysia, Hong Kong, USA, Qatar, Taja, Maldives, etc. And uh, welcome to you, sir, once again to the table. Yeah. At the outset, uh, my sincere apologies to Ms. Ashwat Ramaya, having made uh, and to wait for almost over 40 minutes. Today's uh, management committee meeting had interesting deliberations, and we had to uh, take this uh, this way. So I'm very sorry about this, sir, but I'm sure uh, what is so unique about unique consultant, something that we're going to hear from you. What do you know? So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. The only fear is that the tail end speakers, people listen more out of uh, sympathy to the trainer. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working against darts. No problem. I'll make it very sharp. Not more than 15 minutes in any case. Yeah. I had brought a detailed uh, PPTs, which I am not going to put because of lack of time. You can share it with us. Hmm? You can oh, share it with us. So basically, I've been asked to speak on a topic called building exemplary work culture and organizations. That is the topic. I've done several programs in various institutions. Basically, when we enter any organization, we find you find boards of vision, mission, values. But I've never found any organization in which the culture is written down. It is only because the culture is an unwritten document. It is very abstract and it is passed on from generations. We cannot have a culture for a startup. Culture has to have a chronology. Only then the culture gets built. The beauty of building a very good culture is you need not go for any selection. People will come to you if you have a good culture. And number two, if you see any person who wants to join a company, except a little percentage of the people, the first thing they observe is how is the culture of the organization. So it's very important to build an exemplary work culture, both to attract talents, to retain the talents, to ensure that there is a progressive development of the employees. And even the employees who leave will have a positive word to speak about the company. And therefore, culture is very, very crucial. Very briefly, I got about four points to talk about culture. I always felt a culture should be having three aspects, what I call as a tighter side of the culture, a brighter side of the culture, and a lighter side of the culture. Now, the tighter side of the culture is something to do with the discipline. Like, for example, regularity, punctuality, SOP, science, technology, protocols, and ensuring that everything goes on as per laid out systems. There are manuals. There are structures. And this is very, very important, and they should not be sacrificed. I call it as the tighter side. The other thing is the brighter side. Like when we read books or we attend lectures, our intelligence get brightened. There must be an opportunity for employees to constantly learn and become brighter in their personalities. In fact, today people are willing to join a company which gives you a less salary, provided they are learning opportunities and they can aspire for a better future after some time. The third thing is, if you are always disciplined on the tighter side, and always learning on the lighter side, you feel psychologically and emotionally suffocated. So therefore, there need to be a lighter side, which means there must be fun, humor, get-togethers, freaking out, which becomes a safety wall to ensure that it is countered with respect to the discipline of the tighter side and also the learning of the lighter side. So every organization has to see whether there is a blissful mix of this tighter, brighter, and lighter side. And if they are lacking in some of them, they need to make it up so that the organization looks very holistic in its approach. So the second aspect which I wanted to tell about the organization is we find some organizations will give more importance to the vision than the values. They are more they are more bothered about the top line, bottom line, the market capitalization, the image of the company, the money they make, the diversifications they do, etc. But their values may be questionable. See, if the values are like the foundation of an organization, the vision is like the superstructure. 
if the foundation is not very strong, the fundamentals are not very strong, any superstructure will collapse one day or the other. There are any number of examples I can give in corporate who have gone into this syndrome, but let me not quote them. People who went for a short-term gain have ended in a long-term pain. So this is the problem of organizations who are only bothered about something which is very concrete to project themselves. In fact, at this time, I always ask my participants, what is the difference between the image of an organization and the reputation of an organization? Image is what you want to make people to believe what you are, and reputation is simply what you are. So if you build a very high image over a very loose reputation, the bubble will burst. You can quote hundreds of examples. At the same time, if you have a very high reputation but no image, your visibility will be very poor, mm -hmm. which means people would not like to join an organization just because it is very ethical, just because it is good, it is doing a lot of CSR, and it is being respected by the people. People want money, people want growth, people want financial improvements. So the organization has to blissfully mix the very strong fundamentals of values and very great superstructure of vision. I always say in my programs, clarity in mind and purity in heart is the surety for success. Mm. If, you, if we don't have the clarity in mind, however purity of heart is there, you will not be recognized. You will be recognized as a good person. But if you have purity of heart, but no clarity of mind, that is also is of very great difficulty. So the organizations will have to find out whether our systems, procedures, our ecosystem, our philosophies, our strategies, our paradigms are equally balanced between the vision and the values. This is the other connotation I want to give. The organizations nowadays have stopped seeing employees as an extension of missions or technology. They are seeing a person as a very holistic approach. In fact, it's very interesting to see. I have conducted more than 500 training programs for top companies for the husbands and wives and for their children. Because I firmly believe a domestic disharmony can lead to a corporate calamity. What happens at your home with your daughter or with your wife or your son has an influence of what happens in the boardroom track. Because after all, we carry the same dream. So it's very important to ensure that the organization develops the people in a very holistic way, which means physically they should make the people more immune, mentally very peaceful, intellectually very sharp, emotionally very stable, culturally very acceptable, socially very respectable, and spiritually identifiable. So this is what... Eh? what this Super, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so much on um, continuous. So it is very important to look at the persons there are so many companies who are putting up gyms in the offices, for example, who are providing the swimming pools, for example, meditation centers. See, and there are people who are conducting programs for the employees, children, and the emotive aspect. So a lot of importance is being, being given to look at the employees as a very holistic personalities, and culture should encompass all these activities. A person should feel physically very strong. Therefore, there must be a good canteen or whatever. Mentally peaceful, you should feel very happy to work in the company. Intellectually, you should be able to give some opportunities to decide. You should become a part in the decision-making process of the company. Emotionally, you should develop a loyalty and a sense of belongingness to the organization by developing the ownership. And finally, there should be some very good ideas of the corporate governance or CSR, which are offshoots of the spirituality. So this is how the cultures are taking a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. Instead of considering an employee as a revenue earner, we are now seeing them as a holistic personalities who need to be developed in a multi-functional dimension. And lastly, I would like to say that the organization has to take care of what I call it as a patana, shravana, manana, chintana, chetana, and jivana. <laughs> patana is that where people see. See, I conduct, uh, say I conduct a three days training program. People will be very euphoric about the program. But if the boss to whom he goes does not support what we are taught, all three days are washed out. Because what happens in the shop floor or in the office between the boss and subordinate is the ground reality. And what he teach them is of academic importance. So in an organization, people should see 
really the values displayed, not on the boards as the monuments of the, board, the calendars, but as a physical reality. Number two, Shravana, which means people should listen good things in the organization, which means periodically the CEO should conduct town hall meetings, there has to be task forces, quality circles, dissemination of success stories, etc. Now, both this patana at the visual level, Shravana at the auditory level should get into their mind and we should give them a lot of food for thought, which means we should encourage them to think, ask, question, doubt, confront. The other day, one CEO of Parliament says, Ashwat, conduct a program. Our people never get opened out in any of the uh, meetings. So your job is to make them open out. I only asked him, when your people open out, what do you do? <laughs> he says, what is that? You will not believe one strange thing I'll tell you, sir. I went and did some survey for a company. And that CEO told me, Ashwat, have you diagnosed? No, let us not start programs. I told, sir, if there is anybody who needs to be totally changed and who is a bottleneck in this company, it's only you. <laughs> oh, he says, Ashwat, you are so ruthless. I told, that is what it is. You will not believe he is such a nice CEO. I won't tell the name. I conducted a three-day program in the just Obi Rai Hotel, taking a small business. There was one teacher, one student for three days. So it's very important for us to understand where things are going wrong. And many times what people do is, when things are becoming bad and uh, top line is shrinking, bottom line is not okay, then they will hire the consultants. In fact, you should hire consultant to understand why things are going right. Because that is where you will get the ideas of what are the drivers of this company. Number three, after this Patana and Shravana and Manana, people should be made to decide, which means intellectual. See, what is the difference between mind and intellect? Mind thinks, intellect decides. For example, if you give this sweet to me, my mind thinks to have this sweet because of the past impression of this sweet, which is encompassed and encrypted in my brain. But my intellect may say, don't take your diabetic. So intellect decides mind things. So we should make people to decide in an organization. Then they feel they are a part of the decision making mechanism. Not just they are just keep on carrying out whatever you are telling. So therefore, the employee should be made as a party to decide you, whenever you make some decisions, consult some of the key people, make some of the people as champions, which are done in many companies. And finally, they should also put those things, decisions into practice, which is called chetana, which is energy. An ounce of practice is better than tons of theory. We say knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. We say practice makes man perfect. Practice never makes man perfect. Only correct practice makes man perfect. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these terminologies need updation. They need to be rechanged and reframed. So people will have to be made to put into practice whatever they have learned. So it becomes entirely their jivana that is life, which is called unconscious competence. You know, you are good. Not that you do good things because you're incapable of doing good things, bad things. So it's very important for people to graduate from a visual level of patana to an auditory level of shravana and the intermixing of these two at the mental level called as manana, put them into your intellect where you take some decisions which is called ch chintana and put those decisions into practice which is called chintana and make the whole life as a organization, as the whole life as a jiva. <laughs> this is how the organizations have to give tremendous amount of importance to the cultures of ensuring that you develop people in a very holistic way on the three parameters of tighter, brighter, and tighter, and also ensuring that the patana, manana, chintana, chetana, and jivana, and ensure that an exemplary organization culture is built so that people enjoy whatever they have been doing. With this, I close my talk. Oh, I think I have not exceeded. Now, so that, now that the snacks is getting served in the boardroom itself, <laughs> you can ask questions. Sir, I want to ask one question, please. And it doesn't very good. Please sir. You covered so many. My thanks and gratitude to Barsura Mansa. Yes, sir. Barsura Mansa insisted you stay back and listen to her. You won't regret it. Please. Don't make I hope you don't regret it. No, 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 no. I think we gave you too short a time. Okay. Developing many calls.
they have been so much into this, your training, uh, so many companies, even CEOs, your training. And see, in India, we have this, um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm ignorant about these things. I've just been in the corporate world for a long time. We call what is called multinational culture. We call uh, Babu culture or family run businesses culture. And we call public sector culture. We normally, you know, job market or anything we talk about. As a person who is working closely with companies, do you see differences in the cultures in these organizations? Any perceptible differences? Basically, we have to make an amalgamation of the best of the both the worlds. Yeah. It is simple in my opinion. Our brain has got two parts, left brain and right brain. Left brain is responsible for logics, rationality, mathematics, grammar, systems, procedures, derivations, etc. The right brain is responsible for feelings, emotions, EQ, spirituality, even religion, intuition, creativity. If left brain is like the chemistry of life, right brain is like the poetry of it. Now, most of the MNCs have gone on the left brain, and very rightly so. They have very good systems in place. They have a, a very good performance management system. They are very logical. They are, they are just be, give you based on what you deserve, not what you desire. It's very good. But at the same time, they have what you call as Babu culture or whatever it is, they are extremely good on the loyalty front. They are very good on the ownership. <laughs> now, today, what has happened? You hire a GM who is extraordinarily brilliant. But if he doesn't have the ownership, after about six months, he goes up. So what happens to the investment we have made with respect to training them? <laughs> At the same time, we cannot go totally towards the culture of the right brain because right brain has got very good things, no doubt about it. But I don't know whether they are very successful things. I need money. I need top line, bottom line, which can come only from left brain. So we have to marry the clarity of the left brain with the flexibility of the right brain, the science and technology of the left brain, to the ownership and commitment of the right brain, to the hardness of the left brain, with the softness of the right brain, with the, the, with the structures which are come from a time-tested approach from the left brain, with a total, what is a sacrifice on the right brain. It is a clash between the competence and the character. It is something like, if I have ulcer, if I, if I have to decide whether I need an operation, you should go to a honest doctor, not a competent doctor. But if you want to get operated, you go to a competent doctor, not a honest doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ask me, should a doctor be more honest than competent or more competent than honest? I would say you should be both. You should not do a surgery just because he wants to make money, however competent he is. At the same time, there's no point in being extremely honest, but you don't know how to cut my stomach on the, uh, this one, uh, operating table. So we need honesty, we need competence. We need character, we need competence. Take the best of both the worlds and use them. Like in my training programs, I say, we say, don't mix up the professional life with personal life. I honestly believe there is no difference between mm -hmm. these two. For example, I have a family logo for my family. I got a performance management system format in which my wife gives me rating yeah. every month. I got a family. Can you pass it? I can, I can. <laughs> and many people have formulated their families. And uh, the family values have been displayed in my house. <clears throat> so a lot of good aspects of the home can be translated. A lot of good aspects of the corporate can be translated at home. Similarly, lot of intuitive, what I should say, relationship-oriented and uh, emotional connect has to be transferred from home to office. Like if my son doesn't study maths, I take 100% responsibility and run around to make him study. But if my subordinate is not doing, I'll just make a phone call and tell him, throw him out. I should consider my subordinate as almost my son. Then only things will work. So the emotional connectedness of the family needs to be transferred to the corporate and the corporate established systems need to be translated and replicated in the family. Similarly, the left brain concepts of the MNCs 
should be married with the right brain principles of the traditional conventional organizations. Sir, uh, we work on two aspects what you're mentioning very clearly. One is the family businesses. We are promoting family businesses across sure. South India. We have a special course running for South Indian uh, family businesses. And we also have, I work on a mindset engineering, which is basically the negativity thoughts, which is becoming more and more predominant and uh, more uh, fashion today. So the only thing which the, I mean, the only part of the body which keeps changing is the brain. So everything else does one or two particular jobs. Could be your hands, legs, uh, kidney, intestine, liver, whatever. But your brain does multiple jobs. It's like a CPU. So keep your mind fresh. I think you're trying to mean that. You're trying to mean that the commitment towards the right brain and the left brain, uh, the equality between, I mean, the kind of com co compatibility between the two brains. But the problem here becomes that the convincing factor is not you, but <clears throat> other uh, related areas. It could be uh, someone's telling you something or some decision, you said bottom line or top line. So how successful were you in this? I mean, are you really able to do it as a structure? Because the brain keeps changing and you can't structure the brain that much. I mean, unless you do deep meditation and like the Swamiji's of the earlier years, uh, how successful have you been now? Anyway, two, three connotations to this, sir. One, contrary to what we think, suppose I ask you, in a minute of you, what is the age of your stomach? What will you tell me? Wrong. Mm -hmm. Your stomach 100% changes every three weeks, which means three weeks back, the stomach, what you had, now you have got a 100% different stomach. So in future, if somebody asks, what is your age? Please tell it is three weeks. <laughs> please read the books of Timeless Mind and Ageless Body by Deepak Chopra. Yeah, yeah. Please read. Every cell Your cell liver cell. changes once in six weeks. Every cell Which cell. the liver what in six weeks? Liver, liver. Six weeks. Liver, liver. Every your, every skeleton, every your skeleton changes once in three months. So after 60, 70, it stops changing because you're aging? No, no, no. It will keep on continuing. What is your skeleton keeps changing? Yes, I once in three I months. I mean, my bones keep moving. Absolutely. Because constantly every cell of every your cell, body cell changes. See, like cellular level. Suppose my liver is having one trillion cells. Now, 10 cells will go out, new cells will come. Another 10 cells will go after one minute. Yeah, totally replaced. So after three months, you will find all the other cells have gone, all new cells have come. You have got a totally different skeleton. So if somebody asks you what is the age of your skeleton, please tell it is three months. If you have any doubt, give my number to you. <laughs> <laughs> data and statistics, yeah, I'll prove. But what's your okay. yes, sir. That is one book. What's the book name, sir? The Ageless Body and Timeless Mind by Dr. Deepak Chopra. But why you said that as an answer to him? I'm coming. What's the connection? Not to negate him, sir. He says brain keeps changing, whereas all others keep doing the same job. They're inanimate. They're Prakriti. They're not Purusha. They're not? They're Prakriti. All our whole body is uh, your so therefore, every... Pranamaya Kosha and Pranamaya Kosha. No, that's the very nature of them is to change. But he's talking about the Manomaya Kosha and the Jnanamaya Kosha, the brain. See, every Kosha changes except the Anandamaya Kosha. Um, Anandamaya Kosha is born. No. Manomaya Kosha is born. No, yes and no. But, see, that is what is... Anandamaya Kosha doesn't... That depends on your Nididhyasana. No, see... Depends on your level of Nididhyasana. There are many people whose Jnanamaya Kosha still remains sort of... No, I'm talking of Ananda Maya. But we won't, uh, we won't get into uh, We don't get into that. Ankara versus Ramani. My spirituality program is seven days. <laughs> no, it should be forever. Eight days for. No point in making it seven days. It should be continuous. No, uh, I mean, you, you are doing this program. I mean, you should be lived throughout your life. But to understand the basics, it means about seven days. I mean, his point is very interesting about so, the brain. and. The... So what I'm trying to tell is, everything in our body, including brain changes, only thing is, brain doesn't change so much as anything else. Brain doesn't One, change as doesn't change. For example, if you lose about 10 cells of brain, it is lost forever. They won't get replenished. Mm -hmm. But then you may think one day brain will become zero. No, it will not happen. Because the amount of stock what you have as brain cells, in your entire life, you will not even use 1% of it. It's like using a computer. Albert Einstein yeah. used 7% of his brain. 4.8%. Even though Albert Weinstein's brain is undergoing research in Kansas University by Dr. Mary and Diamond in Parmaldehyde solution. 
He has used only four point eight. As per that, all of us are using less than point zero one. <laughs> Out of which ninety six percent, as per electroencephalograph, we use it for negative thinking. Two percent is neutral thinking. Two percent of point zero one is positive. <laughs> then the pedigree of your brain. Anyway, forget about it. Now coming to this, that the brain doesn't change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The main point here is that we, if somebody is not listening to, if you are not convinced of what I have spoken today. I am also equally responsible of my inability. Similarly, when you say your boss or your manager does not agree to you, I should take fifty percent blame that I am not capable of convincing. So you develop that persuading capability, that articulation capability, the presentation and the communication skills. At least fifty percent will feel get convinced. It calls for tremendous amount of skill. Huge knowledge base, the amount of conviction what you have and what you are speaking, supporting with statistics data, and with anecdotes, possibly fifty percent people will get convinced. The remaining fifty people, not that they did not get convinced, they don't want to get convinced. That nobody can convince them. Leave them out. All that I am trying to tell you is, any person can be made to change. I I have a YouTube channel you can see. It is called B R T P. B R T P. B R T P. If you want to change anybody, including you, B is belief. You should have a belief that people can be changed. R. You should take personal responsibility to change. T. You should know the right techniques to change. Four. You should have the patience to change. P. B R T P. Fifty percent people can be changed. I hope I'm clear. Please see my YouTube's. Okay. Very interesting. Very nice. I tell you a simple example because you told me there is a company called Plosa in Bir Salva. So there is MD Deepak Balika. He told me, Ashwat, you are doing like now so many programs. How do I know that my people have changed? I told that you should check, sir. That is your job. What this man did was without informing me. One fine morning, when all the supervisors, managers came. Without notice, he put them all in a bus, SRS bus, <laughs> and sent them to a forest, which is about 300 kilometers away from Bangalore. Is and he took them. MLS or huh? MLS? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my normally in my, normally in my training programs. I talk. <laughs> normally in my training programs, I talk about normal human beings. <laughs> i will not get it contaminated or corrupted anyway so the workers came the operators they find in the whole company there is no supervisor no foreman no nobody then they started telephoning nobody is taking the phone call then they remembered what did ashwat started what ashwat ramesh sir was telling do your job we don't need any supervisor they started doing the job after 3 days still outside these people came Thinking that everyone would be chit chatting, everyone will be wasting time. That's what was happening earlier. They found to their surprise, everyone is work has worked and the productivity remained the same in the three days as if the supervisors and managers were present. Mm. He has given a two-page letter to me confirming this. Autopilot. You can take one. Mm. So it's possible to create cultures of that. See, in COVID times. Yeah. When we could work from home. Exactly. We could reduce fifty percent. It's a reality. I'll I'll give you an example. Some years back, I was on a study tour to Japan, and they have the largest uh, racing industry, horse racing industry. Mm -hmm. So I was touring the race course there, the largest race course there. So I walked around, and they were showing me hmm. how people are working and everything. So I said, "Okay, how much staff do you have? How much staff do you have paid here?" I said, "Who's the supervisor for this?" So this lady, she turns and looks up to me. She says, "Supervisor? <laughs> What is a supervisor?" <laughs> We don't have supervisors. Why do you need? They do not the job them in Japan. You need a job properly. That was a lesson. There's no conductor for buses in Japan. Conductor. What happened to the jobs of the ones in the bus? <laughs> they came after three days. Yeah, and did they still have a job after that? Madam, I made I made a open challenge in one of the TV program. Nobody is unemployed in India. Only two types of people are unemployed. One, who is lazy, yeah. who wants to do only this type of job. Yeah. You give me any person who is willing to do this, I will get him the job next tomorrow. <laughs> so what will happen? They will not lose the job. They will do better jobs. I, I will use it. I will use them for more. 
developmental purpose. Planning, planning, planning. Absolutely. So many, for example. So it is only a redeployment or a job enrichment. Mm. Nobody will become redundant. So long as we got the knowledge, capabilities, competencies, we will not become redundant. So no issues on that. I have been training from last 30 years. I approximately conduct 28 days of training program in a month. Wow. Wow. In fact, from my, in the morning, I went to a company, Royal Orchid. From there, I'm coming here, putting my senior faculty there. And we wait. made you wait for 40 minutes. But it's no, no, no. <laughs> you didn't have joined us. Faculty. Maybe you would have helped us in the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so that... Our culture, you would have found out. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Brief talk, but uh, very powerful. I understood how unique you are on the thinking. Uh, next, I have uh, Mr. Gochan. Introduce yourself as to who you are and what you are planning. She's also um, visiting us today uh, based on the suggestion of Mr. Parshur Raman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir, for this opportunity as well. Um, so, I... I have been a learning and development professional. I, when so I met Sir, I said I'm still a budding trainer in that sense, but I've spent about 15 years in different corporates. Uh, but now I run a startup called Off Experiences. Uh, what Sir just mentioned about people who are employ the ones who are employable are the ones who are okay, who are not stuck to saying this is the job that I want to do. Um, and keeping that in mind, we work primarily with people um, who are okay to do mid-career transitions. So anybody who is looking to make career pivots, uh, come back post their career breaks. Um, and we also specifically work with uh, women who are transitioning from being working professionals to working mom professionals. So we equip them uh, with the, they have the competence we equip them with the required, um, I would say, confidence, clarity, so that they can work and continue to remain productive. So we run these as uh, open programs. We work with corporates to do that uh, with a lot of focus on mindset, coaching, behavioral transformation, because skills and knowledge is plenty and they've all had have that or there are enough and more avenues today to pick that up. These are the areas where people end up struggling a little bit. So that's what we do. We are a very young startup. And because I also uh, have been a le learning and development professional, I still do trainings on the side. I work with a lot of uh, large organizations like Aditya Birla and Genpact and so on. And I do a lot of manufacturing trainings for their manufacturing setups. But off experience is what I focus and uh, what, what we are building right now. So we have building. two questions. How old is your organization? Yeah. <laughs> is it, um... Corporate entity? Uh, yes. So we are. Uh, yeah. We are about membership. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we are. Uh, we started in uh, February twenty one, but effectively we start. I mean, that's when we are registered. But effectively we started in October twenty one. So we are just about a year and a half or thereabouts. We are. Uh, we are registered as a private limited organization, and we work with a venture builder building company who owns about 15% of the company's equity. I own me and another partner. We own about the rest. Thank you. So, yeah. What's the name of your firm? You said? It's called Off Experiences. Off Experiences. Off Experiences. OFF? OF. So we are all a make of our experiences. So that's the... Okay. Do you, are you all, do you, so you tie up with the corporates? Yes. To, to sort of... For, for the, uh, the, the, the latter part of the business, which is like a post uh, career breaks. Yes. Women. So we work, like I said, so we work with corporates and uh, so we are a B2B2C platform. So we work with them for each of these three programs. We run these as cohort journeys. Um, so whether they have, uh, they may have coming post uh, their maternity leave. So we support them for the first six months because that's the inflection point. We also work with them if they have people returning post career breaks. We support mm -hmm. that and internal career movements, pivots, gotcha. as well as people who are looking to. So your customers will be the corporates. Largely, we also run a program which is the BCC program, but that's from a uh, career pivot from a corporate into a gig slash a solopreneur work. So how do you make that shift? So that's something that we do. Okay, so 
you have anything, madam? You can help. Oh, that's, that's it. Okay. So I'm uh, very Keep pleased passing. to. I'm very pleased to inform all of you that uh, every Monday there is a publication yeah, yeah. out from BCAC. I need to connect with you. Thank you very much. Yes, I do. Every Monday there is a publication that comes on BCIC called BCIC Weekly Digest. If you have not read them, I keep it's reading. a memorable moment for you to know that 100th edition has come out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I would request Mr. Murli, the architect of yeah. this, to oh, please come here. Release it along with Mr. Yeah. Chief Guest for the day. I know. Probably. I should thank uh, former President uh, your job is to assess from kindly release this. We will open this. Yeah, yeah. We will thank. Thank you. 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 He is a walking encyclopedia. And uh, who should find a place here in our library? Yes, yes. very yes. soon. The longer session with him. Uh, so, what is your place? Bring his book here and signed and given here. And every book is a Bible. You can keep on reading for any of our life. Excellent. That's my. There he is. Can you just discuss uh, those books? Okay. Okay. Books for me? Okay. Help her. And please, Mr. I'll just show the books. Right. Right. Read your columns and the books. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have a useful department. Sorry, work in more technical and technical. No, no, the, the books, the books are connected. Absolutely. Yeah, books. Thank, thank you. Just, okay. Thank you. Show it to you. I got. So these are the books that have been published. Ten books. Ten. Books. And all of them meant for the BCAC library. Books, is it? Wow. Yeah. The BCAC library. So these are books. Sir, please. Thank you, Diamond. Thanks for. Uh, yeah. A book called a celebration called Life. And it contains a lot of facts. Personal and social. The second book is called The Roadmap for Success. It is more on your professional skills. While it's tied in the last college. Communication, presentation skills. It's very easy skills like that. Another book is called In Canada, Body for the Book. Dr. Viren Regre has taken about 10 chapters from this book. After talking to me. And he has put in his book and published about 3 lakh copies. And this is a book called Pati Pat Nere Attention Plus. On husband wife relationship, authored by my wife with my support. <laughs> <laughs> and its English version is called Give Tiny Husband Wife Relationship. It's a very popular book. And this book, especially, is one of the past, not now, one of the top 10 selling in Karnataka. Oh. Maybe about 15 years. Before you should give it. Before you should give it. Before you should give it. What's your one banner on? Is it good or bad? I simply won't. Don't try it. This is a book, Yoga. Tomorrow I got a program on Yoga for Sats. In R.G. R.G. Rai Hotel. I want to prove that yoga is not only for mental peace or spiritual evolution. Yes. Yoga is for you and me to develop our skills and competencies and achieve incredible support in career, business, and yoga. Yoga, karma, and kaushal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This is Makkalanu Belaswarit, the art of parenting in Canada. Its English version is art of parenting. And finally, a book exclusively for students, proper to age standard. Now I'm writing a book called Employability Skills. For the final year students, I am writing a book called Graceful Aging and also 14 Principles of Practical Spirituality. Those are the pipeline. These are all the books. Two sets of these books. I got extreme pleasure to donate to DCA. Thank you for the book, sir.